So good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. I really, really appreciate it. <clears throat> um, you know, it's it's always humbling to me when when I turn on the computer and find out that there's people showing up to listen to what I have to say on a Saturday morning. So I truly appreciate it. Um, so let's take a look at um, this is today's class is pretty much by request and like i said it's going to be relatively casual in the way we're going to just kind of go over some of the basic concepts of of charting and price action and then kind of walk through some methods to practice that price action uh work and the things that i used to just spend literally hour upon hour upon hour doing um because I would, I would get, anybody ever get frustrated with yourself that, <clears throat> how did I miss that trade? You know, we always look back and you're frustrated. How did I miss it? And what I, what I would do, um, because I would, I would be angry with myself, but I would try to find a way to make, you know, make that productive. And so I would go back and study the price action leading into it. And I would go forward and backward, um, one period at a time, one day at a time. And I would be looking for the different, the changes in the price action so that I could study that because I was committed to the fact that I was not going to miss it the next time I saw it. I wasn't going to beat myself up for having missed it this time, but I didn't want to miss it again. So I would really focus in on that price action, and that's kind of what we're going to do today. There's no, um, there's no slides. We're just going to jump right to the chart. And <clears throat> I picked out this chart for a reason. Um, when, when you look at charts, one of the things that people tend to do is they tend to focus too much to the hard right edge, right? We focus on the hard right edge and we don't actually take a look at the chart. You see, if I zoom this up, this chart looks much different than when we go back here. What's your first impression when you look at this chart? Choppy, yeah. It's a price action nightmare. Okay. There's no consistency to it. The price isn't deliberate. It's a mess. Okay. When I see a chart like this, I don't care what's happening over here. I'm not interested in this chart. Because a chart doesn't normally change its character. You know, if we've been in multi-year of messiness like this, it doesn't normally change its character in one move. Does that make sense, guys? So one of the first mistakes that I think people make in charting is always thinking every chart is an opportunity to trade. And I don't believe that to be true. When I see a chart like this, I just want to avoid it like the plague. I want to avoid it like the coronavirus. I, I mean, it, it, you know, you get close to this and some of that mess sticks to you. You can't wash it off. And it'll actually make your account sick trying to trade something like that. It's a mess. Okay. So yeah, that's correct. This would not go on my watch list. Even if I initially spotted a price pattern in here, it wouldn't go on my watch list because of this. And so one of the things I wanna really um, impress upon everyone is how important it is to look at the chart. To not just look at the hard right edge, but to look at the chart. What's going on here? And it's okay, you can even look at a weekly. What's, what's happening here? 
And when we look at these charts to take a look at the big picture and see what is really going on, is this something that, you know, when you look at this chart, does anyone feel like, yeah, I can figure out what the next move is here? Yeah, and yeah, it'd be just be like, um, no, right? It's a mess. So when we find charts like that, when we find good charts, it's also a wise thing to just pull back. You know, if we take a look at a SQ, if you guys remember, we traded SQ a lot back here. A lot. As a matter of fact, if I turn on all of my drawings, you can see all the drawings in here on this chart when we were trading this. Okay. When you look at a chart like this and you see a price pattern like this, this these are the charts that go on your list. These are the charts that you can make tremendous money with and they're easy to trade. Okay. We, so for me, part of building a qualified watch list is really looking at the charts, not just the hard right edge. Remember, the most important thing to me in any trade is I want to see a chart that has a trend. And if I can't see deliberate price action and consistency and trend, could you find, I mean, is there any place in the market that you can find a trend that's more beautiful than that? Man, when this was doing its thing, price action was deliberate, it was consistent, it was beautiful. This is a chart that's just giving it up. Everything that you want in that chart is giving it up for a potential trade, okay? Because we have that beautiful trend, we have that beautiful consistency, we have price action that is easy to maintain and watch. And, you know, um, question that comes up a lot is, well, how many charts should I have on a watch list? Well, let me ask you the question a different way. When you find a chart like this, how many charts do you really need to be trading? <laughs> right? You have a few like this and you're in good shape, right? You don't need a ton of charts. Okay. You don't have to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of charts that you look at. As a matter of fact, I would tell you what most people do on a daily basis is waste their day chasing around chart signals, rushing around, okay, and, and not actually getting into focusing on the price action. Would, how many of you would, would admit that that's been a problem for you in the past or may still be? Because I know it was for me. I would, I would spend my days rushing around, chasing scans, chasing, you know, whatever it is, chasing. And you guys would also probably admit you would see a trade and say, hmm, boy, um, yeah, I like that. And then jump to the next dozen. And by the time you come back, or if you forget about it after all, come back and find out that the stock did really well and you didn't trade it at all because you weren't focused enough to slow down and set up a trade. You know, um, watching that video um, this morning, those kind of things, think about, you know, how that person was going along filming and doing this in those, in the woods and stuff. They were slowing down. You notice how they would stop and really take a look at something and film something. We need to be doing that with our charting. We need to slow down. We need to stop chasing so much. And we need to focus in on some charts, some good trends, okay? Now, I would go back and I would say, geez, how did I miss this trade? How did I, how, 
what happened here? Why didn't I get in on this? And you guys, we did this the other day in a chart and I'm just gonna go through a chart like this and an exercise where you just take on TC2000, you can take down here at the bottom as you can see. It's kind of hard to see on a white chart, but it's there. And I would pull a chart back, okay? And I would start to analyze the price action. All right. Now you guys know that there's two basic patterns that I trade. All right. The first, the first pattern, first requirement is the stock has to be in a trend. We cannot have a trend until we make a higher low, whether it be the PBO, what we call a PBO, pullback opportunity. That's, that's um, Rick's, um, Rick gave that, that, that name, that pullback opportunity. Or I look for that pop out of the box. Okay, which you guys can see on my channel. It's, it's the pattern that um, I have traded for all, all, forever. Okay, and essentially those are the two patterns that I trade. I really don't try to get any fancier than that. So my job, my full-time job, is to look for these two patterns within a trend. Okay? Now, if the downtrend of the chart is right here, do I really have an uptrend to trade? <clears throat> That's right. Now for me, now you can make money. Believe me, you can make money in here. All right, but I prefer to just wait for the trend to show itself. Okay. Yeah, this is a wedge pattern. I wait for the trend to show itself. I want to see downtrends break. Now I'm going to jump here. Uh, I'm going to mess you guys up here for a second, but I'm going to go to the Dow, right, or the Diamonds right now, and let's pull this, pull this back. Do we have a trend? We don't. Right? We don't have a reason to be chasing around a whole bunch of stock trades. Yes, we do. We have a downtrend. That's right. We have a downtrend. We don't have that uptrend established yet. But let's be honest, guys. What, what, what was everyone doing the last several days? Everyone was trying to find long trades. Right? So when we see charts like this, and this is a daily, I have to remember and I have to consciously remember, even though the bulls were trying to hold this market up and trying to hold it and do things, that every time, <clears throat> every time we've come up here into this area, we have failed. And I can tell you that I'm not smart enough to, to begin to know when this downtrend is going to break until it does. Okay. You need to refresh your, refresh the, the room. If you can't see the image, refresh the room. Assuming you're on a computer and not on your phone. If you're on your phone, you're not going to get an image unless you log in through a browser.
Okay. So that's something that I want to impress on everyone that I have no desire anymore. I, I used to fight this all the time. I would fight this all the time and try to be the superhero trader um, that could predict or pick market bottoms. And, and I can tell you that I never ever had a good winning ratio trying to do that, ever. In fact, what it did to me is it kept me so beat up in my trading, it kept me so um, frustrated in my trading that I really wasn't enjoying trading. Okay, because I was always fighting. It's kind of like, you know, going into the ring with Muhammad Ali and, and thinking you're going to come out without being beaten and bloody. <clears throat> yeah, a very expensive hobby. And so just because the market is open doesn't mean that I have to be trading. Okay. Until I get the setups that I want, I don't have to be in this. All right. And I think that's a really important thing for every trader to develop. Okay. Now we can take a look at intraday charts and we can certainly find patterns and in intraday during this crazy market that are potentially tradable okay we can find those those positions and patterns but until uh, to make those quick in and out trades and with the current volatility that's some of the best stuff that you can do right now because of the, the wildness of the market but when we take a look at those daily charts and i'm really trying to focus in on that daily swing trade right now for this class because that's where i spend almost all of my time is looking for those daily swings but i need a trend to do that so what i see in this chart and i think everyone kind of has to admit that under this under this trend currently and the fact that we failed this price support right in here the other day where we broke down that this has every reason to believe that this could fall and be actually be a short trade Right? If we're honest with ourselves, that's what that chart looks like. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back to that SQ since we were on that. <clears throat> I'm going to pull this back and we're going to blow this up to this area that I was looking at. So when I look at this chart and see that we actually made a bottom in here, we bottomed, rallied had an ugly ugly sell-off here this was an earnings event i don't really see the trend beginning in this chart until we break through here right we got to get up through that downside move we got to get up and show that institutions are actually supporting and backing this stock and that's how a stock trends. Institutions have to support it. Okay. Now, once we, we identify that there is some kind of a trend going on in a chart, now we need to start thinking about our price patterns. What are the patterns are, that, are we, that we are going to try to trade? All right. And I'm going to actually flip to a 3.8 trap. And I'm going to pull that back to that area. That's one thing that I wish TC2000 would do. If you pull back one chart, all charts pull back, but that's not the way it works. Okay. So when we start looking at the 3.8 trap pattern, remember we're looking for two things. We know that our trend 
has kind of begun. We broke our downtrend, remember, right through here. Broke that downtrend. So our trend is starting to begin in this area. Now, keep in mind with the 3-8 trap, any 3-8 trap trade, I don't want to trade the crossover. All right, because I've been trapped in those too many times where it trapped me rather than me trapping price where I could make money. So, for example, this crossover, I used to trade chase that all the time. And just far too many times, I would catch in here and then it would actually fail and make a new low. And it's, it's honestly, it's about half the time that you get a false breakout. Okay, so we have to wait for the stock to pull back and hold. Remember, our pattern is this. We find the trend, we wait for the pullback, and then we look for an entry if it holds support. Until this occurs, we have nothing to do with this chart. We've got nothing to mess with. Okay, now you can see I've got um, I've got um, volatility stop on here. Let's take this off because the the three eight we we normally use the trendinator, and that trendinator is clearly defined here, where the downtrend turned into an uptrend. Okay. So looking at these charts and looking at these patterns, now we have to start defining our setups and entries. And I get this question all the time, well, what's a buy signal? And we have these period, we have these questions and these times where we fight our, our self, right? We're always fighting ourselves. We're always fighting our natural, um, uh, defense mechanism to protect ourselves, right? When I put up a chart like this and say there's a 3A trap setting up, the first thing that's gonna happen, it happens to me all the time. Even when I send out a trade, I get emails. Why are you buying that? It's below resistance, right there. It's below resistance. Why would you be buying that? The reason I get those questions is because people don't have a plan. They're not planning. Okay. I'm telling you exactly why I would pick a trade like that because it finally broke downtrend. It finally rallied and pulled back and held support. And I have a 3-8 trap set up with a possible entry. Okay. Now, when I have a resistance above that, and I, by the way, would you guys call this a minor resistance? When I have that minor resistance like that, I'm going to go ahead and, and I, I'm going to trust and respect the trend in the trade. I'll take opportunities like that. If this trade sets up with a low enough risk in the trade, I will take those trades. Does that mean that this is a perfect setup? No, and, and that's the thing that everyone wants to try and identify the perfect trade, the perfect setup. And I can tell you in my entire history of trading, there's never been such a thing. There's never been a perfect setup because we always have to fight our own natural inclination to, you know, for protection to, um, we, we second guess ourselves, right? We challenge ourselves. Now, the only way that you can fix that problem is have a plan. Okay, if you know your risk tolerance, how many dollars you're willing to risk on a stop, it should be really easy. When you look at a trade like this, it should be a decision, a fairly simple decision. 
does this miss meet my risk tolerance? You see, what a lot of people are trying to do is they're trying to find a guarantee. Let me fix that problem for you and tell you that there is no guarantee in the market ever. There's no guarantee there's going to be a win on any trade that you take. The only thing we can control is how much risk we take and the patterns that we choose to trade. Does that make sense? That is the only things that we can really control. And we have to get past this idea that there's the perfect trade, that there is always going to be, you know, just that one, that one perfect stock out there that's going to provide us a winning trade. I've never found that to be true. As a matter of fact, I have never found that I could trade just one stock at a time and make money. Okay. Now think about this for the logic here for a second, guys. If we looked at that diamonds chart, if the diamonds breaks its downtrend and holds as support and starts seeing buyers coming in, is there going to be more than one stock showing trend at that time? Has to be, right? A lot more. The only way those indexes can do that is if a lot of stocks are trending. A lot of stocks are starting to move up. Okay, if the indexes are showing us trend, if we are going out there and looking for the one perfect trade today and just try to take one trade and then sit there and stare at it all day, what's going to happen to us? We're going to miss tons of others. This trade might be the one that faked this out. So while there's lots of stocks moving up, we happen to just get onto the trade that failed or didn't go anywhere. And we're, doesn't that add even more frustration? So one of the things that I want to encourage everyone to do is when trends start to occur, we've got to get past this idea that we can take one trade and then just stare at it all day. Okay, because what happens when you stare at a chart as it wiggles around? Well, first off, it gets really, really boring. And so what you try to do is you try to get fancy. Okay, well, let's 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 get fancy here and let's go to a five minute chart and see if we can manage this now by the five minute chart, because at least there's something moving there. Emotion starts to build, right? Scott's saying anxiety. Emotion starts to build. And before you know it, You've made one of the critical mistakes in trading. You've micromanaged yourself into a loss or micromanaged yourself into a tiny winner that could have been a great big winner had we just left it alone. Okay. Let's think about this concept for a second. When a stock starts to trend, is there anything you and I can do about that? We can do a thing about it, right? So what's the best course of action for us? Sell. 
set up a trend, well, find our trend, set up our trade, plan our entry, make sure it's acceptable, and then do what? Trust our technical analysis. Trust the trade, trust the trend. Okay, let the stock do what it's going to do. We can't do anything about it. We can't force it up. If, even if we stare at it all day long, it won't make any difference to the stock. Remember, the market doesn't care whether you make money. It doesn't care if you lose money. Okay, when you say dollars must hold support, no, price must hold support, um, is that on the new trend or on the horizontal support line? We, well, first off, trend, we broke the downtrend here, right? So where does trend begin? Where does the uptrend begin? The only place the uptrend can begin is the first hold of support. When buyers come in and pick up and start pushing up, that's where trend begins. That's what I described right here, right? Stock moves up, pulls back, holds. That's where trend begins. Until that occurs, there's no trend. Now, does that mean that you have to buy this first entry? No. You don't have to buy that first entry. You could have bought right there. You could have bought right here. Okay, so just because that is the first and the most perfect potential entry doesn't mean that's where you're going to get in. I Oftentimes the trend has moved along before uh, sometimes I even put it on my list. Okay, what's important is that we have begun the trend. Okay, once that is established, draw your line. Where's the trend? Are we responding to the trend? Notice the trendinator is the 17 EMA. It stays green the entire time. That's our trend. No, it doesn't matter. As long as you stay within that trend, it doesn't matter. Right? Would it matter if you bought on this candle? or this candle, or this candle. No, really doesn't matter. As long as it fit your risk tolerance, does it work? It's consolidating. That's what it's doing. It's resting and consolidating. It still works, right? It's still a winning trade. Oh, I will, I will set up, <laughs> yeah, I find tons of trades, Lauren. Um, virtually every day I find tons of trades that are potential setups that I don't trade because they don't make, meet my risk tolerance for the trade. There's something out of whack, volatility is too crazy, something along the lines. I find tons of those trades that I just step away from. Remember, I'm working for a high win-loss ratio, which means that I don't just trade to trade. Okay, I don't trade to just stay busy. Okay. I trade when the trade sets up. 
when I see the good opportunity in there and I trade less than a lot of people. Okay. And I'm okay with that. I don't need to trade every day. I don't have my, I don't have, you know, my ego in the market saying, yep, every day is a day to trade. Every day is a day that I'm just going to be throwing risk out there and yep. No. I don't want to be that guy. First off, it's stressful. Okay? And even though you guys know I work a lot of hours, I'm lazy. <laughs> I don't want to work that hard. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> so you have to think about that. Well, and and Grace, that's true. Some people trading for income, but they still have to follow a guideline. They still have to follow rules. If they're throwing risk all in and they're, they're, they're not being conscious of trends and those kind of things, Grace, their attempt to trade for income makes them broke. You can argue with the market as much as you want. The market will always win. We're not big enough to beat the market. Okay, that's right. Trade with the market. Just be, make it simple. See, we've talked about this quite a bit. We have lots of disadvantages in the market, right? Institutions have every single advantage over us. They have their computers tied directly to the backbone of the market. They can actually see our trade, trade against our trade, and be back out before our trade actually fills. High frequency for trading. Algorithms running against the market. Okay. We know that about two-thirds of the market volume is now done in, in dark pools. We can't even see where they're moving anymore. Okay, But you know, if we give up the idea that we can predict where institutions are going or going to go or all of those kind of things and just wait for them to show us, all we have to do is follow. That's all we have to do. is follow where the institutions are showing us they want to go. Was it very hard to make money in SQ here? It was really simple, right? It really wasn't a hard thing to do to make money in SQ. And there's tons of stocks like that that we've seen and talked about in trade that just continue or have continued to do their thing. Okay. So let's talk about a couple of the patterns here that I will not trade. All right. I'm pretty much a stickler on the three and the eight crossing. All right. If I have a three that breaks down below the eight, now the reason that we break down below the eight is let's think about the technical pattern here. What happened to create that move? And we kind of forget about that. When we put indicators on the chart, our eyes go to the indicators. We stop looking at price action. What occurred here? Well, what created that situation is that we broke price support. We broke down through price support. 
So what does that tell us? We break price support, we run the risk of a rally and a failure. Right? Anytime we break a price support, that is a potential scenario. Okay, so in this chart, when I see the three crossing down below the eight, this is no longer a tradable move that I'm interested in. Because I know we could easily rally, hit resistance anywhere in here and fail. That's not the trade I'm after. Again, I don't have to trade every move in the stock. And I've proven that I can make money, really good money, support my family, put kids through college, by being extremely picky about the trend and the trades. Okay. Uh, Scott, if you're trading just a straight up naked chart, not using anything like this, yeah, you're going to have to make decisions like that. But what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm talking about the 3-8 trap because so many people in here are following the 3-8 trap trade. Okay. So I'm pretty much a stickler on that setup. Now the other thing is if I shut off the trendinator here for a second and I turn on the volatility stop, we're gonna see another situation that sets itself up, okay? Where the stock, the, um, the volatility stop is showing us, telling us that we broke this support right here. All right, now one of the things that you're gonna to have to work on, Scott, is if you're gonna trade just a straight up naked chart, and that's perfectly acceptable, okay? That's 99% of all of my trades come from a straight up naked chart. But if you're going to trade that straight up naked chart, right in here, you need to recognize that this broke price support and that's no longer a trade. You either respect support, resistance, and trend, or you don't. And if you don't, it'll cost you. Okay? So you have to make those decisions trading that naked chart. We gotta remember, hey, price support broke. Okay, that's going to be important. That's going to be important. So make sure when you're paying attention to these things that you're focusing on the technicals of the chart. Does that make sense, guys? You have to focus on the technicals. If you, you can't pick and choose and say, well, this is one I'm going to follow. This is one I'm not going to follow. A stock moves up, consolidates, moves on up, and then breaks that support. This is now out of trend. Okay. Now out of trend. Okay, so as we move this chart forward, and by the way, guys, this is something we talked about the other day. As we move this chart forward, I would move these charts forward one day at a time, okay? As I was checking the price action, uh, prices that have already moved. And seriously, guys, um, I would spend marathon sessions. My wife would get so mad at me because I, I worked a lot of hours during the week. I, you know, building houses, I'd, I'd leave at five in the morning and I wouldn't get back until um, eight, nine o'clock at night sometimes. And then I'd be looking at charts and um, um, 
then I usually work on Saturdays quite a bit and I'd come home on Saturday afternoon and I would spend, you know, clear through the night sometimes just looking at charts and practicing the price action. And I did this for hours and hours and hours at a time where I would pull a chart back and I would study the price action. Okay, now with TC2000, they make it real easy. Pull the chart back and your bracket keys will move you forward one day at a time. Okay. And I would look at these chart patterns. All right, what happened here in this chart? We had a gap up. So what happens when we gap? Gap and move away. Yeah, <laughs> I still have those dreams sometimes, um, Steve, where I'm actually inside the chart. I'm standing. It, it's always that I'm standing like right in an area like this and I'm watching the chart. I'm watching the prices form. Um, and when and it's funny when the when the market's falling, it's uh, the candles are actually falling on me. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm weird. Okay, I'm I'm a nerd <laughs> um, when it comes to charts. But what happens when a stock gaps like this? And we have to consider all of the all of the things that occur in a chart, right? All the things that can occur. Well, this was probably an earnings event or a news event of some kind that created that gap in the chart. When we get that excessive move like this. Many times what that creates is a longer consolidation. You just think about that for a second. You know, we get that big popping move. Well, we get the longer consolidation, okay? Everything has to come back to normal. Everything has to settle. We've all seen those charts and we all get excited about those charts where we get a stock that gaps up, gives a little pullback and then just runs to the moon. Those are rare. They happen, but they're rare. And I'll tell you the truth, I'm not interested in them. Unless I happen to catch that trade before it popped and moved, I'm really not interested. And you guys know when I'm in a trade and I catch the gap up, I'm more likely to just close the trade than anything else. Take the profit and say, thank you very much, Mr. Market. Okay. So the amplitude of price moves is important. When we get those excessive moves up in a chart, we have to know that the chances of a pullback or a consolidation like that is just the natural move for the stock to come back to some kind of a trend setup. Okay. Now, clearly, what we have going on here Think about this for a second. This trend here basically broke because of the consolidation. This trend here, when we popped, pushed us a long ways away on the chart. So where's the trend? Where's the trend? The trend has changed, right? When we get a gapping move like that, we have to wait for that next entry signal to start identifying the next trend. Because trends tra change. We go from trends like this to trends like this. We f steepen. Or we have trends like this that suddenly flatten out. So we have to wait for the next trend. And as you move this across here and watch this, notice we're just getting that longer consolidation. Okay. Now, you guys know my pop out of the box pattern. Pop out of the box pattern requires a minimum of four days in tight consolidation. Do we have a pop out of the box pattern setting up here? Yeah, clearly, right? So my next step on this chart is to set a price alert. I'm going to wait for that trade to come to me. 
I really don't care if it moves up or if it fails, comes back down and fills this gap. I really don't care. But if it does move up, I know I have a pattern here because notice that gap is being held as support. And I don't care how long this takes. I really don't care if this takes three weeks or a month and a half or two months. It makes no difference to me. And the reason is, is because I set an alert and I forget about it. I let the chart do what it has to do and make it come to me. I'm not going to go back and look at it 19 times throughout the day, trying to picking out that, you know, micromanage the entry. I'm going to wait. for the trade. So the stock continues to move sideways, continues to hold in here, continues to consolidate. I get notified when the stock decides to move. All right. Now I want to, I want to, cause I get this question all the time and I want to describe this pretty clearly. If the market is bullish, okay, I get this question a lot. So do you buy it there? 99% of the time, if the market is bullish, I buy it right there. Okay. And the reason I do that is first off what I explained before. There's no trade that's a guarantee, right? Do I have a setup here? My setup, do I have it? Yes. Do I have a trade with a low risk entry? Yes. So is it my job to second guess this or try to micromanage this and say, hey, this has to be a winner or loser? I have no idea and I'm never gonna know until I take the trade. Okay. Where do I remember the vol? This is the trendinator. This isn't the volatility stop. Okay. And I'm always going to respect price action more than any indicator. So where does my stop go? My stop is always going to go underneath the price action. Always. I'm always going to respect the price action. If I can't make this trade work based on how far away that is, I walk away from the trade. If I look at this and say, I, well, that's just too much risk, I can't take that trade, I walk away. But what I don't do is I don't throw this chart out. Because I may, how many times have you guys seen where a stock breaks a consolidation like that? Stock pops up through a consolidation like that, goes one or two days and then pulls back to it and then goes. I might be able to get my tighter entry right here that fits my tolerance if I just pay attention to the chart. I still have trend. That's another one of the major mistakes people make is we're constantly chasing around the new flavor of the day, right? We're not giving the market the due respect it needs to just wait for the trade. Um, more often than not, Lauren, yes, you'll either get a pretty substantial pullback or a longer consolidation when we when we separate away, when we get that amplitude move right there. Okay. So what I do on a trade like this is I set my stop and essentially I'm rolling the dice, right? I have my pattern, I have my setup, I have an alert. I have a low risk entry, it meets my risk tolerance. Win, lose, or draw, I'm going to take that trade. Okay, because if I wait, if I try to micromanage this, what's going to happen? If the stock moves up, 
How many of you have ever seen a trade like this and you go, man, I wish I, I, I want to be in that trade, but I'm just so, I'm, I'm uncertain about this resistance here. I can't take that trade. Even though it fits my tolerance, I'm arguing with the market here, arguing with the trend. Can't take that trade. And then what happens the next day is the stock's up here. And now I can't trade it at all. Right? So once again, I'm going to go back. Good trading requires you to plan the trade, know your risk tolerance, and decide, is this my pattern? Is this my setup? And trust the trade. We don't know if it's going to win, lose, but we know we have a, a, a loss that we've calculated that that's acceptable. We don't want it to occur. We also have a market that's trending. We're trending with the market. The stock is trending. Why are we arguing with a potential setup? Why are we negotiating with the market? And the reason that occurs, guys, is because you don't have a plan and you're not sticking to it. It really is that simple. You're trying to be the perfect trader and um, you're never going to be one. I just, I just put that out there. It's, you're not going to be a perfect trader. I don't know if Rick is listening or Steve is listening or Ed is listening. You guys ever consider yourself to be a perfect trader? There's no such thing. So set your plan, establish your trade, and there it is. So I take those trades. Most of the time, if the market's trending and I'm comfortable with the market direction, I take those trades. I don't argue with the market or the pattern. Stock continues to move up. But it didn't really blow the doors off here, did it? Should I change anything about this trade? Because it just didn't, gosh, I, I want to make some money so bad, but should I change something here? No. The pattern, there's nothing substantial that's changed in the chart. Stay with the trade. If, when I'm not able to watch the market, Joe, yes. Or if there's way more trades potentially populating that I could, that I could even set up during a morning session or something, yes, I will sometimes set automatic orders if it triggers through conditional orders triggers through a level to enter me into a trade okay but by and large nowadays i am here and have the time so i set up the trade after the after the alert triggers okay and here's the other thing if i have an alert up here and I've already done the work to know that I have a trade that fits my risk tolerance. When that trade triggers, can I just jump over there and take the trade? And then come back and put my stop loss in, make sure nothing has really changed there. But I already know the setup, right? I'm prepared for the trade. I'm not chasing it. So I can be prepared ahead of time for that trade. Does that make sense? Yeah, we worked hard with Lex to make those things happen in that in Trade Hawk. Kind of cool, isn't it, Joe? Well, like I just said, Sorcerer, when it triggers my entry, if I like the pattern set up, the market direction is good, the trend is good, I take the trade. It doesn't have to close above there. I take the trade when the order triggers or when the alert triggers most of the time. Okay. I don't try to micromanage or manipulate that. Now, you can be the kind of person, and it's okay to do this, 
you just have to remember if you wait for a close up there you may miss the trade if it takes off the next day and goes okay now on the other hand you can also sometimes miss the trade where it popped up hit that entry and pulled back now here's a difference that I think is really really important guys when I'm taking a trade, remember I said I waited here, I'm noticing a pop out of the box pattern. Pop out of the box pattern requires a minimum of four days. Am I rushing to take a trade on a pop out of the box if I require a minimum of four days? No, I've got to be patient, right? To let the pattern trade. Let the pattern come together if I'm waiting for that. All right, what's the other key factor here? And you guys hear me talk about this quite often. The stock zooms up. We get this zoom up here. Stock zooms up and we get a pullback that looks kind of like this. We get that sharp pullback. And then right about here, we get that nice bullish candle. Okay. Now what that usually means is trend is all the way back over, whoops, wrong tool, dang it. A second, I'll have to redraw that. Tool changed on me. We get that nice big move up, we get that strong pullback that occurs, and then that buy signal pops in here. But our volatility stop is all the way down here because of the amplitude of the move, like this. Yeah, risk too great. And, and I can tell you that so many times on that really strong move up and that really quick pullback, if I take this trade, <laughs> the very next candle is this. And what it'll do more often than not is because this was a nice strong move is it's going to consolidate its way over to trend and then the real buy signal occurs over here it doesn't necessarily stop you out or create a bad trade but you have to wait sometimes a week week and a half for that to come back around Yes, the risk is showing um, if you take that trade, your risk will always show that volatility stop. Things will be too far away from price. So if you've pl you're planning your trade, you'll avoid those positions. Okay. So that's a key, key element to think about. So notice what we've done here in this chart is we've just continue to consolidate and bang stopped out of the trade okay now is this the end of the world should I throw this chart out and start complaining and whining and oh the market does this to me all the time and just barely triggers me in no it's just it just happens right it's just the market don't throw out the chart. Okay, what do we do here? We just start watching and waiting for the next potential entry. So we jump back up. There's no entry trade here, right? That's right, follow your plan. No entry trade, no entry trade, no entry trade. We're starting to form up a consolidation again. We've got three days of a pop out of the box pattern. Do you think we could set an alert here? And here's the thing that just occurred is we really kind of just established our trend here. So we're waiting for this trade now.
four days we got our pop out of the box pattern set up no trade occurs we fail below our three no trade alert comes off okay no trade the other day I showed you one that was um, showed you a trend that it was just kind of perfect setups I wanted to show you one that's not perfect setups because this is more common right can you guys see that the patience of our trading is what's really important here that we're following our rules and our plan that we're staying consistent with our trading so now we're crossing back up continuing to consolidate this big expansion in price right here created a great big long consolidation move and if I pull this back we're essentially coming back to our overall big trend aren't we and if we look right in here, we're still holding that price support. So there's nothing wrong in this chart. Um, no, balance of power reversal would not necessarily, a uh, trend is more important to me than anything else. Trend, support, resistance, and trend. Um, remember, guys, indicators are just not. I, 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 the three and the eight just help me find a trade. The 17 helps me find a trade, but they're not important. Price is important. Okay. about the only time I'm really going to focus on BOP there's very specific times I'm going to focus on BOP and I can explain that on one of these days or you can there's classes on that actually but um, I can't explain that one of these days so now we cross up our three starts to stretch up and we're starting to get this little move so I'm not in this trade I'm going to wait for the next entry Okay, had a little tiny little consolidation here, and that was just the reaction to this price high over here. But I can tell you honestly, probably wouldn't have caught it, probably wouldn't have been in that trade. So I'm just gonna keep watching. Crummy price action here, making it very, very difficult to enter into the trade. Another pop, another pop out of the box consolidation setting up, three holding up above the eight. We've broken above resistance. Place a price alert on here. Let's see if we can get into a trade. Continuing to form up, I'm probably in this trade. As we popped up through there, I'm probably in this trade. Okay. Son of a gun. Another one. But had you set your stop properly under this price support, you probably would have stayed in this trade. Okay. Let's keep going. Nice big moves up. Nice strength. Okay, we're up six days in a row. Should we, if we're in this trade, should we be taking profits? 
Should we be scaling out? Yep. Should be taking some money out of this trade, expecting some kind of a rest or pullback here soon. There was our little four day pop out of the box pattern. Continuing on up, and there we get the big whoopsie down. So, even if you had a trailer in here, you should probably be out of that trade. Okay. By the way, I want to point this out right in here. Notice that the three held above or right in on the eight. That wasn't a violation of the plan or a violation of the trade. Okay. What do you guys think? Looking at this chart, what do you think of this move? Certainly some volatilities come into this trade, but there's our trend. Bullish engulfing candle, right? Do you think we should place a price alert up here? You may not like the trade setup. Well, here's the thing, and here's the question that you guys will have to ask yourself. This down here was a pretty low risk entry. This, not so much. So for some folks, this might be a good trade. For some folks, this is not a good trade. Okay. So recognize those moves and how steep they can get away. So the longer this stays in a consolidation, the better this gets, right? How many of you are feeling that it's getting better here. Are you in the trade? Have you made that decision? If you're not in the trade, or if you are in the trade, you're still good. If you're not in the trade, this trade's getting better, isn't it? Yep, three staying above the eight. Uh oh. Are you staying in the trade now? Whoops, doggone it. Pretty rough price action right there, right? In this consolidation. Pretty rough price action. So for those who did buy that trade in here and put that stop loss here, stayed in the position. They were uncomfortable with the trade for a while. But they stayed in the position. Those of you that tightened your stop too much didn't respect the support were stopped out. Doesn't mean that you were wrong, just, hey, the market handed you some lemonade or lemons and you need to try and make some lemonade out of it. So as you, as you guys practice this price action, go back in these charts and try to pick out 
those trade entries, doing this one day at a time. You can see that as you go through, um, market handed you lessons, yeah, that's right. As you go through and you're looking at these price patterns, you can, you can watch and see how they develop. The more practice that you have at doing this, the better you're going to be at setting those alerts and those trades, those potential entries into positions. So we moved up, we broke resistance in the chart. I think we should set an alert up here. We're moving closer and closer and closer to a 3A trap type trade. Still moving over to trend, right? If I pull this chart back. We're still taking this move over to trend. We're in the position, we're stopped out of the position. Okay. Yeah, that was nasty, wasn't it? <laughs> Here's the thing that's frustrating about this. You guys noticing a pattern on this? This is another thing that you'll learn when you do this. How many times have we seen good entry signals and then it completely reversed? What's happening here, and you'll see this from time to time on charts, market makers love this game. Yep. Yep, market makers and algorithms, those high frequency trading firms love this game. This is where those institutions have an advantage over us. And they'll pick on stocks like this from time to time where you'll get, you'll get that beautiful entry signal and almost immediately get slammed the other direction. They strip out stops and then the stock turns around and continues up. So what we have to do is we have to make sure when we see this multiple times to be very, very careful about the entries into these trades. And the thing is, what's interesting is it won't happen forever. They'll do it several times and then they kind of give up on a chart that's, that's trending. They won't do it after a period of time. But it's interesting when that occurs and you see it repeatedly in a chart. Now what that can tell you is that we're trading here in a chart. Remember, SQ hadn't been trading that long. This is a new issue. And although we're in a trend, because this is a new issue, we have a lot more volatility to it. Those are important things to recognize. Okay. So we go through this little protracted pullback in here. Volatility stop turns red. Bouncing around, chopping. No trades, no trades, no trades. Possibility of a trade setting up here as long as you're not concerned about this resistance. And the reason I say that is because what is what has now occurred? We broke the downtrend and we're trying to establish the uptrend. Okay, it's the pattern I'm always looking for in a chart. Downtrend breaks, pattern starts moving up, 
So maybe I take a, take a shot here at a potential trade. And we expand on out. So winner, winner, chicken dinner. The recognition of the break of the downtrend, the hold of support, once again wins the day. Nice little pullback. Nice little 3-8 trap pullback. You feeling lucky here? Five days in a tight consolidation. Think there's another opportunity? Ball stop close enough for you? Maybe set up another potential trade? Oh, look at him do it again. And then right back up. <laughs> See how much you can learn from a chart if you just look at the price action? See how you can learn that setting your stops too tightly are probably causing you a lot of pain? Yeah, I do have the Trendinator on, Glenn. So if we plan trades around stocks that show this kind of volatility and going back in the chart ahead of a trade and just moving through each one of those potential setups, can that tell you a lot about the price action? Bianca is correct. Um, any slower term chart will have better results. Okay. Slower term charts will always have better results. We have more complete data slows the chart down the position trader like i said the dirty secret in the industry guys is the folks who really make money in the market are position traders Okay. And by the way, you don't have to you don't have to trade a full weekly chart. Heck, you can do a do a three day chart. Can you make money on the three day? Heck yeah. Even a two day removes a whole lot of that noise. You can mo remove even more of that noise if you choose to do the 2-6 hike and ashy. During that period. Oh, that's a three day. Let's go to a daily. There's the daily. 2-6 hike and ashy. Okay, so you, and, 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 and even in the, in the hike and ashy guys, it's all about the price action, right? The setups are the same. You know, notice right here on that last alert that I set up in here, the setup here is exactly the same. One thing I will tell you about the consolidations in a hike and ashy is they're so much tighter and so much better defined. That that downtrend break right here, look how clean that was. 
and it's because of that averaging of price action but you kind of have to get used to that and it's really hard for folks that have always traded regular candlesticks to just jump over and trade Heike and Ashe because they're so used that I need that exact price you kind of have to give up that idea with the Heike and Ashe when you're just following charts okay but that's not really what this class was about um, the class was about that that price action and the reason I wanted to show you SQ the reason I think that was um, a good exercise is just simply because there's no perfect chart out there right there's no perfect pattern and as you follow along in a chart you learn great stuff about the price action okay so let's say you were looking at a chart that had started a trend already started a trend and you were trying to determine this if this price action fit you for the next trade that could be setting up a good exercise to do trade has been trending you see a trade setting up now let's go back in time and let's move through are we getting those little market maker games are we getting those little sweeps coming in here follow along follow that price action it tells you about how much um, stop loss you need to place how consistent the price action is okay and can give you great information about that coming trade that you're waiting on all right makes sense so guys I hope you got something out of this today you guys are troopers been here an hour and a half thanks for being here I truly, truly appreciate it. I'll get this put together, rendered up, and we'll get it um, we'll get it posted as soon as I can. Thank you guys. I truly appreciate it. Get to practicing on this price action. Focus in on the bigger picture. Make sure you're testing these patterns. You know, if you want to build confidence in your trading, Test the patterns in the past. Make sure that they're working for you, that you're seeing them correctly, that you're following the patterns correctly. All right? And it'll pay off huge in the future. And now is a great time to be doing this. And by the way, just because the market's crummy right now doesn't mean that we can't go into stocks like... Um, This is a, um, a, a, a um, inverse chart and it's very volatile and it's two times the market. But if we go into shorter term charts, can we practice our price action work in here? We absolutely can. You know, we can find there's that big gapping move that pullback three stays above you have to make that decision do i enter this with the stop being quite a ways down here by the way this is the this is the trendinator it's not actually a stop do i enter this or how about this one up here would have this been a better trade for you and start de detailing out that price action so that you can start getting better and better at those price action skills and trust me on this guys if you can do this if you can read price action, any chart, in any market, anywhere, is tradable. I'm sure Steve would agree with that. If you can read price action, you can trade futures, you can trade currencies, you can trade commodities, you can trade, you know, um, just anything that puts price action on a chart. If you can learn to read price action. All right. So everyone, have a great afternoon. Have a great day. Um, remember that Sunday, Steve is doing the... Um, the Sunday evening class, 8 p.m. Eastern. It'll be in the training education room. And also, make a note, I'm doing the e-learning session on Tuesday. And for those of you signed up for the 3-8 Trap class next Saturday, 
you know, just be ready for that. We'll get some emails out to you and everything here soon on that 3-8 trap class coming up on Saturday. All right, y'all take care. Have a great, great weekend. Have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.